but we begin our coverage of the day's events in Canberra with political correspondent Tommy Gilton. Prime Minister's victory was never in doubt, but the vilification of her challenger continued right up until this morning's spill. I think that she's been like the Pakistani cricket captain. She had people who are not playing the team in the last few years. Mr Rudd gathered his small posse of supporters before the vote. Morning everybody, how are you? The Prime Minister felt no need for such a display. Good morning. A news poll published this morning shows Mr Rudd is more popular with the public, but in caucus he was comprehensively trounced. Uh, Julia Gillard has won the ballot, 71 votes to, to 31. Speeches from the combatants were kept short. The vote was brought on after about five minutes. The mood, uh, I think it's fair to say, was reasonably tense and I think uh, as a result of the uh, conclusion of the battle, I think uh, most members are happy uh, that this matter has now been determined. Despite the predictability of today's ballot, questions remain. Is it enough to legitimise and reinvigorate Julia Gillard's leadership and is her victory today enough to see off Kevin Rudd's leadership ambitions once and for all? In his concession speech, right. Kevin Rudd was magnanimous. The caucus has spoken. I accept the caucus's verdict without qualification and without rancour. I bear no grudges. I bear no one any malice. And if I've done wrong to anyone in what I've said or in what I've done, to them I apologise. Over the last week, the former Prime Minister's questioned Julia Gillard's honesty, found fault with her policies and accused her backers of treachery for the 2010 coup against him. But now he's ruling out another challenge. I dedicate myself to working fully for her re-election as the Prime Minister of Australia. And I will do so with my absolute ability dedicated to that task. I think anybody who's watched Kevin Rudd's statement to the media today uh, could see the honesty, the you know, uh, candour, uh, the way that he's approached that press conference. They could see what he said and I absolutely accept it. The Gillard camp's character assassination over the last week of Mr Rudd and his stealth campaign against her was almost without parallel in modern Labor leadership bouts that too is now apparently forgotten. As a nation, as a Labor Party, we must honour his many achievements as Prime Minister. Kevin Rudd led this nation through the global financial crisis. The Prime Minister did not, however, back away from her recently expressed view that Kevin Rudd's leadership was chaotic and his government paralysed. Back in 2010 I took the view that uh, uh, I didn't uh, want to, uh, in terms of respect for Kevin Rudd and the government's achievements, canvass those matters publicly. I now realise that that was an error and it made it very difficult for the Australian public to understand what had happened. The Prime Minister says now the infighting will end and she's focused back on voters. I can assure you that this political drama is over and now you are back at centre stage where you should properly be. I intend to be a very forceful advocate of the government's policies, so settle in. Any other questions? There was another question from the opposition leader. Given that one third of her parliamentary colleagues and a quarter of her cabinet colleagues have expressed their lack of confidence in her today, how can she claim to have a mandate to continue as Prime Minister? Having survived his leadership issues by one vote, it's no wonder the Leader of the Opposition got some new suits after he became Leader of the Opposition. The rest of them were covered with blood, Mr Speaker. Well, how can the Prime Minister claim to have the confidence of this House when 31 members of the caucus voted for someone whom the member for Bendigo last week called a psychopath, Mr Speaker. So I anticipate today that in question time the Leader of the Opposition will be focused on the Labor Party. Well, I can assure him of this. We are focused on the nation's future. But Tony Abbott predicted today's Labor leadership spill weeks ahead and he, for one, isn't swayed by Mr Rudd's assurances. Don't think that the faceless men are going to go away. Oh, no. Oh no, we know what the faceless men are doing. But one... I mean, anyone who thinks that uh, I'm a faceless man... ..is going. Mark Arbeeb helped engineer Mr Rudd's coup against Kim Beasley as opposition leader, then turned his back on him to support Julia Gillard. I'm sure, given my past as a, you know, someone involved in every dispute in the party for you know, the last 10 years, I'm sure there's plenty who'd like to see me out of the party. That's part of life. 
This is politics. Now he's quitting the Senate and a parliamentary career that seems set to take him into the Cabinet. He says he's doing so to help the party heal the wounds of the last week. Everyone um, has a responsibility to get the party on track, all of us. But I think I'm, I'm uniquely placed, um, given my own history, to help do that. There's little doubt of the ALP's need for healing, but another stumble in the weeks and months ahead could reopen whatever wounds are closed by today's show of unity. Tom Eagleton, Lakeline.